the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. This is the Sports Vote Campaign update for Sunday, September 12th, 2021. Um, you, there may be repeats throughout this, again, as I'm reading directly from my notes, so apologies for that. Um, I think the regulators should be pointed out for being hypocrites. Um, 60-year-old wire act, I'm not letting this go, acting like that doesn't exist, while allowing the uh, states to proceed with state-by-state -state gambling enabling when, as long as you use the banking system or any broadcast network, you're crossing state lines, which they're clearly doing thereby breaking the 60-year-old 60 wire, 60 wire act. So that's hypocrisy, plain and simple. Uh, big lie. It's a big lie to act as if the wire act doesn't exist, just like it's a big lie to say that Trump won the election in 2020, which he did not. These are lies, folks. Lies, lies. So this has always been more than just an investment. Uh, this is the new all sports market was put on a nonprofit structure, is on a nonprofit structure. On the very home page, it is stated that the mission is to advance the concept of sports investing and to squash sports gambling. Apparently, um, quite a few people have forgotten this or chose to never see it in the first place. This is more than an investment. It's a mission. It's been a mission for more than a decade. If you look back at when we first started talking about this, the idea is not just to produce a profitable business, but to actually make change. And that change is to promote sports investing over sports gambling. You know, it all comes down to what's uh, known as the courage of your convictions. You know, everybody can go along with things while they're good, uh, but it's when things get tested you find out what people really believe in. And we've been through this a few times and have gone through it and are going through it again. The question is, do you believe or do you not believe? We have not changed direction. We've said that we're at what we were after and we're still on the same track. I have the courage of conviction. Do you? So ESPN, uh, whose parent is Disney, is entertaining large multi-billion dollar gambling deals. Shame on you. Shame on you. I mean, seriously, folks. We knew that gambling was a bad idea more than 60 years ago. That's the reason for the Wear Act. It's amazing to me how humanity makes the same mistakes over and over and over again. So there are some that believe that we ha can't uh, convert gamblers. Basically, that there's nothing here. That's absolute hogwash back in Costa Rica. We very clearly, and I want to point something out. We never advertised on any gambling sites. That's also a lie. We did get gambling customers. We had a lot of sports gambling customers, and we converted them from sports gambling to sports investing permanently. We did surveys on this back in the Costa Rica period. I know this for a fact. So this platform will attract gamblers and convert them permanently. To say otherwise is a lie. So there is movement on the SEC um, versus XRP case and we're keeping a close eye on that it's hard to say yet what the impact is if you've been tracking that um it's like the sec for some reason has decided that xrp is a bad beanie baby and bitcoin is a good beanie baby or at least one that should be considered which is ridiculous um anyhow there there are some major legal points that may apply for us in terms of uh, resolving the sec matter because again hypocrisy 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 it's everywhere you look lies twisting of the facts playing by one set of rules in one area playing by another set of rules in another area and i'll say this again if we don't get back to the rule of law this republic will fall like all the previous ones have fallen who went down this path um, empty. You know, I've been watching some of the um, game coverage of the Major League Baseball games, and I see a lot of empty stands. So uh, I wonder why nobody's talking about that. Uh, the masses are wrong. Uh, you know, Henry Ford said this very famously about uh, automobiles in the age of horses. If you if you ask the people what they wanted back in those days, they'd say a faster horse, not cars. Uh, you know, oftentimes the public is misdirected. The only reason they're going to even attempt to embrace sports gambling is because it's the known quantity. It's been around for a long time. That being said, most people know it's not a good idea, no matter how many ads you run. 
Okay, it's not a new thing. It's nothing new going on here. People have been betting on sports a long time. So uh, USA Today had an anti-NFL gambling article, which is interesting and hypocritical since they're one of the big proponents, the Gannett Group, uh, of uh, sports gambling through their ties. (laughs) Playing both sides of the field here, guys. Uh, Okay, so on the 501c3, uh, the requirements by IRS are to file the uh, documents and explanation and returns and everything um, that that are owed, the three years of returns, along with why we didn't file them on time, basically plead our case to the IRS. It's due by the end of next year. It's actually 15 months past the notice date, which was August 9th of 21. That puts it at um, at uh, November 9th of 22, so nearly the end of next year. It's over a year from now. Uh, the impact is nil for us because we don't have any programs operating the um, previous contributions that anybody made before August 9th are still tax deductible if there were any. There were there were, have been programs for a long time, so this doesn't have any retroactive negative effect on anything, just to point that out. Um, and since we don't have any programs now, it doesn't have any impact on what we're doing now. And even if we did, those of you who have been around since before the 501c3, because it took several years to get the 501c3 approved, um, we were taking donations prior to that, so it's not like we can't do it. It's just that we have to explain the potential uh, non-deductibility and all of that. So it, it doesn't have any direct impact, and uh, with a successful outcome, which we anticipate we'll be able to achieve, it will be as if it never happened. Um, it'll be retroactive all the way back to the August 9th, 2021 um notice date. And again, the reason for all of this is because of of all the factors that I outlined, the SEC case fouling up our inability to get the audit uh, stuff out that we paid for, by the way, Uh, mostly paid for. I don't know. I don't recall if we paid for all of it. We paid for most of it. We still haven't got it. Um, And that, of course, made it very difficult for us to fundraise. And then there was the pandemic. All those things did result in us getting behind uh, it, it's actually not that far behind. It's less than two years behind because the uh, 2018 return was actually due at the end of 2019. Uh, it was extended, I think, until November. So uh, that's a little less than two years ago right now. So anyhow, point is, is that we're working on it, um, actively working on it in the background, and we anticipate being able to resolve it successfully, um, you know, it's going to take, I mean, if you look at the date here, November 9th of 2022, we don't, we're not even required. That's the deadline to even file all of the returns and the justification. So this is going to be a while. In the interim, uh, we're still alive. Everything's still operating. The market is still operating. So just want to be clear about that. Um, so the NFT market is still exploding. It uh, was up another roughly 10 times. Uh, in uh, volume month over month. So it's really, really taken off. But I, I have a real issue with this instability of um, of the current coins that are being used like Ethereum and the fees are way, way, way too high. So I'm watching for, somebody's going to identify this. It's just a matter of time because the market is just going berserk, um, going crazy on the upside. So somebody's going to identify this and fix it. I have no doubt they're going to create a another um, a, a stable coin. If anybody's listening, I mean, I would do this if this was my area of interest, but what we need is a, um, a, a backbone that's a stable coin tied to the dollar and the total fees, including credit card, uh, it should be no more than 5%. I, I, you might be able to get to 10, but I don't think 10 would, would last very long. Somebody would come in the market and undercut you. But if you can process credit cards um, and allow people to uh, by using a stable coin, stable dollar coin, and then acquire NFTs, that you're going to have a massive business on your hands. So um, I'll say this again, that uh, there's never going to be a single cent, not one cent, uh, collected by uh, Seth Leon or the SEC on their claims. It will never happen. Uh, these are bogus. Uh, you know, even the SEC tried to force a default. So you know, it's kind of playing the same games over and again, which caused me to lose even more respect for the legal profession. I mean, what is this? You know, if you've got a case, take it to trial, put it in front of a jury. What What is this technical garbage? So 
I don't know how you sleep at night, all the people who are involved in this. Uh, you're not going to get anything out of it other than just uh, backfire. You know, you're going to set a trap or you've set traps, actually, and those are the traps you're going to fall in yourself. That's how it works because you're on the wrong side. OK, plain and simple. You're on the wrong side. Um, 20,000 franchises died in 2020. That's uh, astounding. Why is that astounding? Because they have resources, they have uh, IP, they have marketing, usually have marketing out in the marketplace that you get to share the benefits of. And 20,000 franchises died and uh, we didn't. So we don't have those, those resources, you know, that stuff going for us and we're still here. So I think, you know, that means something. You should, uh, you should consider that's pretty amazing given the, the conditions under which we've had to operate. Impatience and greed. Impatience plus greed equal ruin. Um, you know, anybody who knows the Bible story, we got some Judas goats uh, here amongst us, although not as many as we used to. They're, um, they're dropping. Uh, I've gotten some news in the, uh, in the background chatter that some, some of the folks that have been involved in making things difficult for us seem to be experiencing problems in their lives. I wonder how that happened. Uh, apparently, you don't have parents, or you didn't have parents who explained to you how things really work. You, you, you reap what you sow, okay? You reap what you sow, so deal with it. Um, yeah, the uh, this story that's gotten a lot of traction about um, lawyers, this lawyer, uh, you know, famous, powerful lawyer, yeah, whatever that means, uh, who had his family shot and then got shot in the head himself, but uh, survived, uh, Apparently stole money. That's really funny. Isn't that what they're hired to do? Um, I'm telling you that things are changing, folks. Um, the days of going around pushing people around with lies, manipulation, fraud, uh, you know, this garbage that goes on in the legal system, which is just out of control, it's coming to an end. Okay, you, you can laugh and giggle all you want, but just I'm putting this on the record for all time here. You're going to see it. I'm already seeing some of these big name lawyers that everybody always talks about, like uh, Boyce. If you, you've been tracking uh, him, he's Mr. Big Shot. Yeah, he's got trouble. Uh, his firm's got trouble. It's going to continue. So um, in the in the next couple of uh, weeks, actually, um, I'm going to be putting together another test to see what interest there is in uh, creating kind of a working group to achieve our um, first uh, fundraise. Again, that's all there is to this. All there is to the success, uh, to make this um, project a success, is to find or create a single sports or esports league to fundraise and then publicize it. That's all. That's that's what will bring nearly 20 years of very hard work and uh, sacrifice to fruition. So um, I'm going to try to see if we can assemble a group um, to actively work on that uh, you know, to get that done because um, that is the keys to the kingdom for us. The gambling pimps will continue to pimp. Um, you know, it's funny. Barron's just put out a story that said there there doesn't appear to be any profit in the betting markets, uh, in the operators. Um, I'm telling you straight up, I saw this from the inside, that this business is not about profit. It's about cash flow and dirty deals. Uh, it's not going to work in, in the gap uh, accounting principles, sort of profit structure. Uh, it doesn't work like that. It's like sitting fat Tony, the bookie down for an IRS audit. It's just not how that game works. I saw it on the inside. It's a dirty deals cash flow racket. And uh, so Barron's picked up on this. And if you look at the um, Q3 projections for DraftKings, which is the flagship, um, they're now saying a, a dollar uh, per share loss is the projected loss for uh, Q3 of 2021. Uh, so that's that's a larger projection than I've seen so far, Lar more red ink than ever. Uh, it's going to be more than that. I'm not ready to call exactly how much more, but they're going to miss that one on the downside too. Uh, you're going to miss that on the downside. And the SPAC stuff is still out there. Um, you know, the SPAC aspect, that's another shortcut. This is all consistent with gambling mentality. Shortcut, 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 fast cash, fast cash. So this is this this is not done by any means. There's a lot of stuff overhead hanging over this, um, and it takes a while to sort it out. But you're going to see more and more and more red ink and more and more negative stuff coming out when they figure out that there's just no profit to be had, not in the conventional sense. And since these are public companies, they have to follow gap accounting and they have to report this stuff. 
and it's just not going to be there. You also have the mature players like the, the British bookies uh, on the regulated side, and then you have the offshore guys in Costa Rica and other places that have had the market for 20 years. Um, they, they can beat you because of the reasons I've stated before. They can give, they're can give they more experienced. They have better lines. They don't report to the tax authorities. Um, they have lower overheads. I mean, all that stuff is going to is gonna hurt you when you um, when you're competing for customers and sports book bookies, I'm sorry, sports book uh, enthusiasts. They they jump from bonus to bonus to bonus to bonus. So what's happening is I'm sure inside of DraftKings they're like, well, just going to buy the customers by hyping the stock, which they're doing constantly, sucking money out of the stock market and using it to buy customers at a loss, which is exactly what they're doing, and that's why the numbers get worse and worse. However, there is no retention that. That whole thought is that we're going to capture those customers at a loss and then we're going to make money off of them later. No, you're not. What's going to happen is they're going to continue to jump, 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 jump wherever they get the best bonuses. And as I covered before, they are uh, – the people that do this, they never – they always look for the best offer. There's no loyalty. So whoever gives them the best bonus deals, that's where they're going to go. The sports book operators tend to have multiple skins – for their sports books under different brands to try to capture those jumps. I've seen it. And most sports book enthusiasts, people that bet on games, they have many sports book accounts and they're constantly going back and forth depending on the bonuses. So anyway, this will be proven out. This will be proven out. And then the market at some point is going to realize that this is not worth funding or and or the uh, the overhang from all these legal conditions is going to finally all come down on their heads. It's just – if not, then we don't have any laws and none of this matters and, and whether a company makes a profit or not doesn't matter and none of that matters and it's just a free-for-all. And in, in that case, the United States of America is going to go extinct. So just – I, I've said this many, many times before. You cannot lose the rule of law and sustain. You cannot. So um, a handful of deceitful, lying scumbags are not going to bring this this uh, our project down. They're not going to bring our mission down. They've tried everything they can think of, and they failed so far. We're still here, aren't we? We're still here. 20,000 franchisees okay, lost their, their businesses last year. 20,000 franchises disappeared, and we're still here. So... You're failing, okay? For all your your deceitful activities, you're failing. And then finally, in a sad note, it looks like the NRHL has ceased to exist. Um, maybe they should have, instead of playing games with us, maybe they should have taken us seriously and that wouldn't have happened. So, you know, rest in peace. Didn't have to be this way. Thanks for your attention and I'll speak with you again in two weeks.